In this tutorial we're going to have a look at trig functions in Autograph, starting off with working in the standard level, uh, which is the level where there's no radians, it's all in degrees, and there's no calculus options. So here are the three basic uh, trig functions that uh, students are expected to know about. Uh, so how does this work? So we'll start off with a new page, and if we do a right-click enter equation, and just enter y equals sine x and see what happens we get that, uh, which is not all that informative, but uh, let me introduce you to two buttons. First of all, the slow plot, and also the uh, red tick, which will put appropriate scales for what we're trying to plot. Now, what we're trying to plot here is a trig function, y equals sine x, so if you click on the red button, you can see what happens now. So, uh, the slow plot means that if we replot this, it will do so slowly, and you can stop and discuss where it's going to go next a useful teaching tool. So where do these functions actually come from? Well if you look at the file new extras page we do actually have a section on trigonometry. These are little flash demonstrations which are easier done in this medium than in the main autograph program. Um, so for example we're in degrees and just have a look at sine x and a is 1 and b is 0, so phi and theta are the same, it's just what we want. So as we move phi around this circle, so the uh, transformation of it over here produces the sine wave. Let's have a look at this. And we can do so with a nice little animation. So that's the relationship between the unit circle and the sine wave, something which happens a great deal in mechanics. Um, think of the engine going around inside your car, it transforms that circular motion into up and down motion of the piston. And you can do the same for cosine and for tan. Now tan is a slightly different one because you'll notice that uh, sine and cosine need 360 degrees uh, to complete their cycle, whereas tan is all finished at 180 and it repeats. So how does that work? Let's uh, see if we can come back to this now and open the new page. Let's have a look at the relationship between the tan function and gradient. So we'll just enter an equation y equals x. don't think we need slow plots just at the moment. And then I'm going to put in y equals mx. So, uh, now m will be 1 by default to start with, and there it is. If we increase m using the constant controller, you can see that m becomes 2 and 3 and 4 and so on. It would be quite nice if we uh, show that this was indeed um, a triangle that represents the gradient. So let's, on this uh, straight line here, I'm going to put a point at x equals 1. And then I'm going to do right click a vertical line there. And I want a horizontal line here, which is y equals 0. So enter y equals 0. And I want the intersection here, intersection here, that already exists. So in the point mode, pressing control, I get the intersection when you get the little circle there and there. Perfect. So if I select now these three points, that one, this one, and this one, and group those into a shape, I shall get a nice indication of the triangle there. And clearly the gradient is, is 2 over 1, which is the rise over the run. As we increase this, so it becomes 3 and 4 and 5 and so on. And you'll notice that even if that went up to infinity, it's never going to go over the top. So that between plus infinity and minus infinity, we do in fact cover all possible values of the gradient. And since the gradient is the tan of that angle, you can see why the tan function only needs 180 degrees uh, for it to work. So let's have a look at transforming standard functions. Let's do y equals sine x again. It's very important, rather like in that other one I had y equals x and y equals mx. If you have y equals sine x on the same graph with the red tick as y equals a sine x, where a is a constant and it will take an initial value of 1. So that's just going to plot straight along there. It, this would have been definitely better with the slow plot. So let's just show how that should have been done. So you can see it actually progressing along the original curve. Now if you get the constant controller out, we can now vary A. But before we do so, we want to discuss what um, is actually going to happen to it. So this is where it's good to get the pen out. 
and uh, grab it here and say, well, look, um, if whatever value of A is, that point's going nowhere and that point's going nowhere. But if A is increasing, then the amplitude is increasing, so that's going to go up and this is going to go down. So these are the things to think about. Try to get a visualization before it actually does it. And we go up to 1 and down to 0 and minus 1 and so on. Now you can animate this in the options. And uh, let's, you can either do a family plot. Let's start from negative 2, tab 2, tab 0.25, and click OK. Now any guitar player will know exactly what that's all about. Uh, alternatively, you can use the same settings and animate up and down, and away you go. And of course, the, there are other um, transformations that are relevant here. Let's have a look at, again, y equals sine x to start with. And let's fast forward that and the red tick. And now we're going to enter y equals sine of bx and have a look at how that works. Again, b will be 1, so it's just going to plot straight on top of the other one. But if we open up the console controller now uh, and ask for b. Now, um, b is transforming the uh, value of x. So if b becomes 2, then uh, when x is, say, 90, this is going to behave like it used to at 180 because 2 at 90 is 180. So the sign of 180 is the value at 90. So in other words, it's gone all the way up and down. So it's going twice as fast as it was. So let's try that. Yes, and we can replot that. So here is a complete cycle taking place in 180 degrees. And if you've forgotten the value of, of B, you can select that and use the text box and uh, take that off. And now you can see the value shown. So B is 2. So what's going to happen when B is 3? Well, it's going to take, uh, um, it's going to do three half cycles in 180 instead of 2. So off we go. And there's 3. 4, 5, 6, and so on. So that clearly, that's, uh, later on when they study this in more detail, it's called frequency. The other sort of uh, constant worth thinking about is x minus c. Uh, in transforming with uh, lateral translations, I always like to use x minus c because when x equals c, the origin value moves to the right, to the value of c. So if we make the constant 0 to start with, then again it will plot straight on top of it. And now the console controller, if we make the step something slightly more interesting like uh, uh, 22.5 then it's going to move to the right as we increase this. Yes, ready, steady, go, yes. And here for example you could put a point on here and a horizontal line and a vertical line and have a look at the effect of varying C and it's a bit like the tide coming up and down uh, in the harbour. So lots of ways to look at uh, simple trig functions and uh, simple transformations. More to come.